Welcome to part three of the Baker's Dozen of Maths Mistakes. This tray of goodies is going to be concerned with how you manage brackets in algebraic manipulation. The three topics we'll be looking at involve how to distribute signs, particularly minus signs, correctly when you're removing brackets. We'll talk also about what happens when you have double brackets. And finally, say a few words about the relationship between brackets and powers. Let's start with the often tricky issue of making sure you keep track of the signs when you distribute terms amongst brackets. Here's a simple example here. Minus 4 multiplying x minus 3. I often see people produce an answer like that. Minus 4x take 12. Have a think for a moment about why that might be an incorrect answer. Well, if at first you thought that was the correct answer, then you probably need to be a little more careful about how you deal with minus signs. Always remember that when you're multiplying a number through brackets, like x minus 3, the sign in front of the number is part of the number, so we're distributing the number minus 4. Both items in the brackets, x and minus 3, are going to be multiplied by this figure out the front. So what we're doing is we're taking minus 4 multiplied by the first term in the bracket, which is x, and then we're taking minus 4 again, and the minus will form, it takes the place of the sign between the terms, and it's minus 4 times the number at the end of the brackets, which also has the sign attached to it, minus 3. Now quite clearly minus 4 times x is just minus 4x. Slightly more subtle with the term at the end, we have two minus signs, and when we multiply two numbers with minus signs in front of them together, it becomes a plus, and therefore the correct answer is minus 4x plus 12. Very easy when a calculation like that is part of a much bigger exercise involving several lines of algebra to make little mistakes like that. So if you're a little bit rigorous about how you distribute those signs and are consistent about how you do it, then the chances of making that mistake are much reduced. So here are four expansions, four distributions of numbers through brackets. Have a think about each one, perhaps work them out yourself on a piece of paper and decide which of those four statements are correct. And feel free to pause the screencast while you do it. So, here are the correct answers. The second item in our Baker's Dozen for this screencast is how to handle situations where you have double brackets. So for example, here we have 2x minus 3, so we have two terms in brackets being multiplied by two other terms, 4x minus 1. Now the important thing, as you probably know, is that each of the two terms in the first bracket need to be multiplied by both terms in the second bracket. So there will be four terms in total. We start with the first terms in each bracket, so 2x multiplied by 4x. Then we turn our attention perhaps to the first term in the first bracket again, multiplied by the second term in the second brackets. So that's pretty straightforward. It's 2x multiplied by minus 1, so we're taking the minus that sits in front of that number. The only question here is what sign goes between those first two terms because there doesn't appear to be one in the original statement of the problem. And that's because there doesn't need to be a number, a sign rather, in front of 2x if it's assumed to be a positive sign. So when you just have 2x, you assume it's a positive. So moving on to the second term in the brackets, we have minus 3, remembering the minus comes with it, multiplied by the first term in the second bracket, which is a 4x. So that's pretty straightforward and the minus sits in the position where the sign will go. Finally, we have minus 3 multiplying minus 1, so to be a bit careful about that. Got a minus 3 times a minus 1. 
Now clearly 2x times 4x, since both are assumed to be positive, it's just going to be 2 fours are 8, x times x is 8x squared. In the second one, we have a positive sign on the first term and a negative on the second, which clearly means that that will ultimately have a minus sign in front of it. And then 2x times 1, of course, is just 2x. Similarly, with the next term, we have a negative 3 and a positive 4x. So that will remain as a negative, and 3 4s are 12. Finally, we have a negative by a negative, which also produces a plus, and 3 1s are 3. By far the most common mistake that people make when expanding double brackets like this is to get the sign wrong on the last term. My theory is it's because you've got to the end of a fairly complex exercise and you're starting to relax or think ahead to the next step. Obviously we would also group together like terms, so minus 2x minus 12x, and that would make minus 14x. But we're really concentrating here on the distribution of the signs. Another common mistake people make is to get confused about the relationship between a problem like this and the one we had before, where the 2x minus 3 were in brackets. Now remember, in the order of operations, multiplication takes precedence over addition and subtraction. So what's happening here is we have a minus 3 multiplying the contents of some brackets, 4x minus 1, and the 2x remains until that process is completed because the multiplications have to come first. So when it comes to distributing terms in algebra, we tackle the items in red and blue, and the 2x stays where it is until further notice. And then we tackle that problem exactly the same way we did earlier. We take the minus 3 and multiply it by the 4x. We then take the minus 3 and multiply by minus 1. And that will produce 3 4s are 12x, negative 3, positive 4x makes a minus in between them. And we have, again, two negatives. Negative 3 times negative 1, which makes positive 3. And once again, we have two like terms, 2x minus 12x, which would produce minus 10x in the next phase of the problem. Here are four examples of bracketed items that need to be expanded. We need to distribute what needs distributing. Pause the screencast now and have a go at those if you like, and then compare your answers with what's about to go up on the screen. OK, so here are the expanded versions of those four expressions. And once again, I haven't bothered to group any like terms. I'm just showing you all the terms that are produced by the expansion itself. If you got those right, if you feel confident, have a crack at these four. Pause the screencast, have a go, see what happens. OK, here are the answers for those four problems. And as before, the like terms haven't been grouped up. All I've shown you is the necessary number of terms that arise from the expansions. This section is about the relationship between indexes or powers and expressions that appear in brackets. Here's an example. Here I've got 2 multiplying x plus 1 squared. A fairly common mistake that people make is to think that it's OK to take that 2 there and draw it inside the brackets, like so. Those two expressions are not going to give you the same answer for all values of x. How do we avoid making a mistake like that? Well, going back to our first screencast where we talked about powers, the power of 2 applies to the item directly to its left. In this case, since we have brackets, it's telling us to raise x plus 1 to the power of 2. By drawing the 2 inside the brackets, as you can see in the version above, 
the two is now being subject to the power and that's clearly not intended by the algebraic statement of the problem. So probably a safer way to tackle the original problem is perhaps to take advantage of the definition of the power, replace the power of 2 by just two copies of x plus 1, and then we can use our skills for expanding double brackets, which we saw earlier, to expand the red part of that problem. And finally, if we wish, we can distribute the 2 amongst those terms. And that would give us the correct answer. A counterpoint to that situation is this one here, where the item inside the brackets, y squared plus 6y, has a common factor, y. Very tempting to take out our common factor. Makes the expression easier. You've probably been told many times that factorised versions of expressions are more useful than unfactorised ones. What's wrong with doing that? Because it is wrong. Well, it's essentially the same answer as we saw previously. The y that's inside the brackets on the left-hand side is clearly subject to the power of 3, whereas on the right-hand side, it's been removed from the influence of the power of 3. So an appropriate strategy for dealing with this is to recognise that fact and perform the factorisation of the y squared plus 6y within the brackets. So all of that is being cubed and we could replace the term inside the brackets by what you see there. Now I've used square brackets to differentiate those from the round brackets that were there at the beginning. Then we can use an index rule that says that two items multiplied together, both raised to the same power, both get the power. So the correct version of that simplification is to attach the power of 3 to the y. And by retaining the round brackets, it's easier to avoid making the mistake of leaving the power off. Once again, four little exercises that you can have a look at if you wish are the two statements on either side of the equal sign in each of those four cases, leading to a correct equality. So pause the screencast now, have a look, and then check your answers. OK, here are the answers. If you'd like to find out more about our services, including our drop-in sessions, workshops, and study survival guides, visit www.studysmarter.uwa.edu.au or find us on Facebook and Twitter.